guys, welcome to Divine Motivation with Carla and Richie Medina. We are just very excited to bring you some divine motivation. Again, it's nothing from us, it's solely our views, but we want to chat with you about Matthew 2. Yes, Matthew 2. So, <clears throat> I guess we should start that we won't go into Matthew 1. <laughs> Because Why it, was, it was during this time that uh, that basically uh, an angel appeared to uh, Joseph and Mary, and actually specifically Joseph, and asked Joseph to take Mary as his wife, even though uh, she was already pregnant. She was prego with the Holy Spirit. Girl, now, who believes wow. that? <laughs> I would have been out. But in either case, uh, all seriousness, um, you know, this is you know we we will go ahead and uh, just jump right into uh, you know chapter two. Uh, and this is when Jesus was uh, basically born, when uh, he came to be. Now, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in uh, the land of Judea, which is uh, which during that time was uh, basically being reigned by a king named Herod. Mm-hmm. Um, he was freaky, but... Yeah, yeah. he was just a mean <laughs> king. But in either case, King Herod, um, after hearing that uh, basically Jesus was born, ended up in... Uh, he gave... Uh, an executive order to mm. all his flunkies. Wow. To uh, <laughs> basically find Jesus and um, basically um, execute him. Kill him. Yeah. yeah. So he and was reason, under persecution. Right. Well, like... the, the reason for that was because he was afraid that uh, he wasn't going to be, you know, popular, I guess, for lack of a better term. Anymore. Well, because the wise men were talking about where is the Messiah? Like everybody was like, where is the Messiah? So understand that, um, you know, the, the, this was all prophesized basically yes. the birth of jesus was prophesied so yes when they heard that you know jesus was born mm-hmm. you know herod ended up sending the three wise men to yep. locate jesus mm-hmm. and i'm sure that most of you heard the story about them following you know the bright star mm-hmm. um, and basically located jesus in bethlehem yeah and they uh, came bearing gifts they came bearing gifts right what was it frankincense gold and myrrh Yes. Myrrh smells so good, by the way. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. So, uh, basically, after the wise men um, met up with Jesus and confirmed that Jesus was indeed They met up. Born, they met up. Yeah, they met yeah. up. <laughs> you know, they basically, um, you know, started to head back. But at that point, they were basically warned by an angel that came to them in a dream that they shouldn't go back. That way. Um, that way. So, instead... They went another route Mm -hmm. and basically never went back to uh, King Herod. They never reported anything back to King Herod. When King Herod basically um, saw that the king, the the, the wise men weren't returning and weren't Mm, coming back, he sent out an executive order to basically have his people or his flunkies, like I said earlier. He said, fishy, fishy. To kill (laughs) every kid under the age of two. Uh, Every every, every male kid under the age of two. And little boys. So here where it, it gets interesting, mm. um, you know, basically, um, you know, Joseph and Mary escaped to uh, Egypt. An yeah. angel appeared to Joseph and said, hey, listen, wake up, fool. You need to go ahead <laughs> and grab your Take family. Your missus. <laughs> grab your family. <laughs> Y'all better jet to Egypt. <laughs> so basically, uh, Joseph did that. He did just that. He ended up picking up his whole family, his all his little belongings that he had you can only imagine and and, tell her to get on that donkey right you know you know today would have been uh you know you're putting everything to your minivan and uh <laughs> rolling out so he headed out north and uh he ended up going over to egypt and he laid low in egypt until the coast was clear and uh that's our next thing they see the, the coast became clear after king herod died mm-hmm. and once again um you know, an angel once again appeared to Joseph and told Joseph, all right, well, you know, you need to get back to Israel. Um, those that persecuted you once and your family are no longer alive and the coast is clear and we need you to basically head back over there and basically make sure that the prophecies come true. 
and like I feel like what we consistently see is that angels are used like angels do appear to chosen people and that you must be disciplined and listen like we are tendency is to like go against what we don't believe like what I gotta what I gotta do what that's not what I want to do um but what stands out to me is the discipline and the like trust and faith that they all displayed. You know, and, and I, I don't know if, if you guys remember, but I've, I've consistently always said that we are all predestined. Um, you know, so when something happens to you, you're like, well, why, why this happened to me? But the truth of the matter is that these things need to be fulfilled, uh, whether good or bad, because that's what has been set for you. Um, so can you imagine, you know, Joseph, here's Joseph. Number one is, you know, he's he married a woman that was already pregnant. It wasn't Ooh, his. Yeah. Okay. You do that? Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be rough. rough. <laughs> You'd be like, you pregnant with what? Right. With who? Number two, um, you know, he has to pick up all his belongings, his family, and just leave. Yeah. And not just leave once, but leave again, you know, to go back into Israel and eventually end up in Nazareth. Right. So, but even for the wise men to also obey the angel or just, you know, just be obedient. Like the word obedient keeps coming to mind. Like we have to be obedient and it's our natural, um, what is it? Instinct to be rebellious to be and resistant. to, to think we know right. what's best for us. Exactly. You know, um, you know, and I guess, you know, when you start seeing things through different eyes, um, you start picking up on these things, mm -hmm. um, you know, that all these things need to be fulfilled. So like I said before, you know, whether you're experiencing turmoil, whether you're being blessed, in either case, stay on task, like, exactly. listen stay up, focused. Stay, stay focused, focused. And, and try to have a listening ear to where God is trying to lead you. Um, you know, it's always tough. Like I, you know, like Carter said, mentioned that, you know, we, we're always trying to be in control of things that, you know, we think that we can go ahead and, you know, basically make happen. But in right. reality, you are not in control um, and uh, you never will be. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better term, right. yes. So, you know, I, I know that there's some confusion in regards to Jesus and his whole story, but Jesus uh, was born in Bethlehem. Um, he ended up crossing over to Egypt after, the, you know, um, his father Joseph Picked up and moved his whole family after, uh, you know, the conversation with the angel who appeared to him. Or being obedient. Right. Yeah. After that, he ended up going back to Israel. Being obedient. Okay, being <laughs> obedient. Um, and eventually, they ended up going to uh, Nazareth. Right. Where basically, that's where, you know, where you hear that Jesus is from Nazareth. And so let's recap and kind of like really put the bright star, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. on this. And it's obedience. Right. So, you know, just like Joseph was obedient, just like the wise men were obedient, you know, we too need to be obedient. Um, you know, um, it's a struggle. Like I said before, we, we're not in control, although we do think that we are. We're not. So, you could, you know, whether it's your spiritual life, your physical fitness life, um, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's all the same thing. It's, you know, you need to be obedient. If you have a, a goal to lose 10 pounds, you need to be obedient, you need to be consistent, and you need to basically stay focused. And I feel like it's an oxymoron for um, the wise men to listen to someone else, too, because they were considered the wise men. So they were considered to be wise above all wiseness. And here comes an angel flapping its wings telling you, do this, turn around, don't go that way. And again, they still were obedient. So although we may think we are wise, we know everything, or we consult people that we think are wiser than us, the wisest consult or counselor is Jesus and, you know, just having that connection with God, your personal connection with God. Well, one thing that um, I personally pray for is wisdom. Mm, discernment. Right. I mean, hear you, Jesus. Right. So my thing is maybe you should start paying for wisdom. Um, you know, wisdom is the key to basically everything. If you have wisdom, you know, that means that, you know, you know where you're going and uh, you know, you know, how to remain humble and generous, uh, how to have some sort of self-control. 
So wisdom is, is a big thing to have. And, you know, that, that's, you know, that's definitely key in this chapter. Yes. So wisdom and obedience, discipline, those are going to be the markers for today. Right, honey? Yes, they are. So stay focused, people, um, you know, pray and, uh, you know, continue your relationship with the Lord. Thank you for joining us for Divine Motivation by the Medinas. We respect your views, so please respect ours. God bless.